You are now listening to the smooth sensations and high vibrations of Alex, host of the best relationship channel on YouTube, Alex. Drop them gems on it. Gen Z doesn't agree that $74,000 is middle class. No kidding, it's not even close. Check this out. If you take $74,000 for a Gen Z, or let's say they have a bachelor's degree and they're 25 years old. First of all, $74,000 is much higher than the average income. Most Gen Zers are probably making anywhere from 40 to 50, maybe 60, but let's use 74. The take home after taxes, 401k and health insurance is $4,300. The average college monthly payment on a loan is about 500 bucks. You're down to 3,800. Let's say this person is financially responsible, decides to split a two bedroom apartment in a medium sized city like Orlando so that their payment is 1,200 a piece, 200 for utilities, so 1,400. Now, unless they're gonna have Lucky Charms and peanut butter and jelly, their groceries are gonna cost about 600 bucks if they're trying to get chicken, beef, and some healthy stuff. You have a $400 car payment, $200 in insurance, 150 for gas, $100 for a cell phone, leaves you with 950 bucks. This is no savings, investment, no emergency fund. Let's give them at least 300 to go on a couple dates or to hang out with their friends for the month so they can enjoy life a little bit. They're left with only $650. A bachelor's degree, 74K salary. You are splitting a two-bedroom apartment with a friend and only have $650 left a month. It would take you years to save up the 30000 that you would need for a down payment on a house with the closing costs. But even if you could get that down payment saved, you would still need to make $120,000 a year to be considered for a $400,000 loan. The middle class, the goalpost has been moved from 70K to $120,000 in just the past two years. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Alex. Shout out to the Elite Fleet. Make sure you like and subscribe so you can become a member of the Elite Fleet. And we gotta talk some business because y'all know I work in finance, so I love to talk business, but I wanna be serious here for a minute. We might crack a few jokes, but I want to be serious here because this is a serious topic because what I want to talk about is how this whole all I'm worried about is me, me, me. I don't want to have any kids. I don't want to get married. I don't want to be in a relationship. It's just me, myself, and I. That's all I got in the end. That's what I found out because from now on, I'm going to be my own best friend. That's the wave of this generation. And I just want you guys to paint an accurate picture to you guys of what that's going to look like realistically for you in the future if you don't drop that fool's gold. This is a very, very delulu, delusional generation, man. I even put my own generation in it, right? Even the millennials, I put us in it because very delulu, very foolish, very selfish, very self-serving, very me, 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 me. Well, all of y'all, I can do bad all by myself, people, Prepare yourself because going forward with the way the economy is turning, and if you've been subscribed to this channel for a while, I've already talked about this three years ago, but the way this economy is turning, doing bad is exactly what you're going to do if you're all by yourself. I want to discuss this article that brings up a topic that, again, I did a video on when I first started my channel. We just had our three-year anniversary about a week ago. And it says Gen Z doesn't believe a $74,000 salary is middle class. Are they right? And so Yahoo Finance takes a look at this, all right? So let's do a quick, before I get into my breakdown, let's just do a quick recap of this article, okay? It's going to be very fast because I got a lot I need to say. It says being middle class in America is defined as making between $38,133. Now I want you guys to know they don't update these numbers, this is old as hell. We all know 38000 ain't no damn middle class. Maybe when my granddad was my age. But I digress. Between $38,000 and $114,000. Now, that seems more accurate in 2023. Now, how the hell do you have a huge gap like the gap between $38,000 and $114,000? $114,000 is more than three times, three times, the amount of 38,000, or it might be exactly three times, but that's way too large of a gap. But again, I digress. According to Pew Research, going by these metrics, 74,000 would definitely be considered middle class, but some members of Gen Z do not think that's the case. Now, if you've watched my videos, I've told you guys, right? Six figures is the new middle class. I told you guys years ago. That's where we were heading. I said 75,000 is where you want to be to live comfortably on your own. 
on your own, okay? You're going to need at least $75,000 to live comfortably on your own. But if you want to live comfortably as a family, you're going to need six figures. That's just the reality. If you just want to get by, right? You're not going to have enough money to do anything extra, but you want to get by. You could live single and get by with about $50,000 in proper money management. But you might as well eliminate everything else. Don't think you're going on no vacations. You ain't going on no vacations. All right? Don't think you're going to have all this alcohol and all this weed in your house or you're going to have a place that's not in a hood or a rough environment. Don't think you're going to get all that if all you're going to aspire to is 50000 But you can get a place. You can live. You can have a car. You can do bare minimum things with $50,000. But to be comfortable, you're going to need about 75. Now, let's continue. As reported by a recent Newsweek survey, only 41% of Gen Z respondents said they consider 74,000 middle class. What is making Gen Z respond this way? Go bank, go banking rates reached out to financial experts to get a handle on why Gen Z views class the way they do. And if there's any validity behind their feelings, all right? Now, I'm going to kind of skip over the geography thing because I talk about it so much on this channel, right? So, obviously, geography plays a factor, okay? Geography plays a factor. And as I say oftentimes, if you live in Tupelo, Mississippi, right, or you live in Syracuse, New York, or you live in Iowa, where the hell is Iowa, or you live in I'm the Ho, right, you live in any of these places, then, yeah, you could probably get by. With 50000 you damn sure are getting by with 75000 But what you guys have to realize, right, when we talk about geography, first of all, I want to say this. Most people do not live in little small-ass cities. Most people live in major metropolitan cities. Most of my subscribers, when I mention the DMV, they're like, hey, I'm from the DMV, which means you're in between Baltimore and D.C. There's no cheap areas in the DMV, really, unless you go all the way to the hood in D.C. or Baltimore, and trust me, you don't want to do that. Everything else is expensive as hell, all right? Most people, they in the DMV. They in New York City. They're in Atlanta. They're in Miami. They're in Dallas. They're in Houston. They're in L.A. They're in Detroit. They're in Chicago. Most of my subscribers are from major metropolitan cities. Most of you are not from some hole-in-the-wall-ass raccoon possum-eating town. That's just the reality. And what you have to realize is if you are fortunate enough to be in a smaller city, you got to realize, guys, you get paid based upon how expensive it is to live where you're from. All right? So, for example, no state in the country pays women more than the DMV does, D.C., Maryland, Virginia. No one pays them more, right? It's the only place in America where women on average make at least $50,000. However, $2,500 a month is what you're going to need just to rent in the DMV most of the time. If you don't want to live in the hood, $2,500, that's what it's going to cost to rent in D.C. And a lot of places in PG, a lot of places in Baltimore, again, if you don't want to live in the hood, Right? And even if you go to the hood, you're still going to be paying probably at least $1,200 to $1,600. The reason I'm pointing this out to you guys is because even if you live in a smaller place, even if you live in a smaller city, right, or a smaller area, what I need you guys to understand is you're not going to be making as much money. If you're a woman and you do live in Idaho, the likelihood you're making even $50,000, let alone six figures, is slim to none. The cost of living dictates how much you get paid in places you live. Because I live in the DMV, for example, all my friends make six figures pretty much, right? Most of my friends went to college just like me, or they went and got a trade, which I also have a trade too. So we're all making money. But again, look where we live. Now, we make enough money to live comfortably where we live, but if we left, right, if we tried to downsize, I'm going to go to Idaho, I'm going to go to Syracuse, I'm going to go to Tupelo. You know, I'm going to go to um, Iowa, wherever I'm going to go. My salary is going to drop significantly because the companies are not stupid and they're aware the cost of living is not high enough to justify paying you that amount of money unless you're an elite executive or you're a business owner. You guys have to understand how the economy works. This is why back in the day I was trying to explain to you guys 
right? Well, not back in the day, but before I was trying to explain to you guys, raising minimum wage doesn't really help because then there's just going to be inflation. It's the same thing when it comes to your jobs. If a job knows the cost of living is high, they'll pay you more money. But are they really paying you more money? Not really, because it costs you more money to live. If the cost of living is low, they pay you less money. You're never going to beat the house. Understand, economics in America, if you don't go out here and get yourself an education, a trade, or start a business, you cannot win. It's like betting against the house in Vegas. They're always going to move the lines and move the numbers so that you lose. All right, so that's... um when it comes to um, geography. We already talked about renting. Now, really quick, I really do want to read this very, 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 very fast, right? Renting. Through buying a home and affording a mortgage presents its own challenges, renting isn't always that much more affordable. The average rent cost in the U.S. is $1,957. Didn't y'all just hear me say, even if you live in the hood, you're probably still paying twelve to $1,600? The average rent cost, let it breathe, run it back. In the U.S. is $1,957, and renters are typically required to earn triple the monthly rent. Amanda Webster, the chief operating officer at Funding Grow, said, Consequently, typically, individuals need to earn more than $74,000 to meet the standard of allocating 30% of income towards housing and to be approved for renting, from which we can conclude that for most Americans, it is not feasible to live comfortably off of $74,000. Shout out to them for throwing that out there. Now, again, if you're by yourself, feasible. If you have a family, you're going to have a hard-ass time. All right? Now, there's some people out there who want to say stuff like, oh, you know, like I seen this one video from this one guy. Hey, look, you know, I pay all the bills. I take care of my whole family on $50,000. It can be done. I had someone in my comments one time who said that. You can have a housewife for $50,000. Sure, sure. First of all, you got to live in Tupelo, Mississippi. You got to live in Syracuse, New York. You better live in Idaho or where the hell is Iowa. You better live in one of those places and understand something. If you want to be a housewife, you do not have a man who has his own self-drive to make more than $50,000, or you cannot motivate him or support him enough to make more than $50,000, just realize y'all going to be living a struggle life your whole life. If you're okay with that, that's fine. I'm not judging you, but I'm telling you, ain't going to be no trips to Disneyland. Your kids ain't going to be able to afford tutors. They're not going to private school. They're going to the public school indoctrination camp. I just want y'all to know that, right? You're going to have one car. Wifey ain't driving no goddamn way. Y'all gonna have one car. Y'all not gonna have no gym memberships. You're gonna live in the hood. You're giving up a lot of stuff, man. I'm just saying. If you're okay with that, that's fine. But I just want y'all to be aware of how much you're giving up. Now, before I break down the next thing, because I know some of you are sitting here, and y'all like, well, Alex, what does this have to do with being alone? I'm gonna explain that. Now, I know some of y'all are like, okay, Alex, we get what you're saying. Doom and gloom, Alex. What the hell does any of this have to do with being alone or being by ourselves or not being in a relationship? Well, I'm going to explain it to you. Very, 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 very simple. If you look at this chart, it says what women earn by race, ethnicity, right? So you're going to have to remember these squares because the screen isn't quite big enough for me to get them all on at one time, all right? So far left, you have white. And below, you have Hispanic. To the right of that, you have black. And on the far right, you have Asian. Try to remember that, and I'll help you guys try to remember. Now, this is broken down by state, which we don't really care about. So we're going to go all the way down to the bottom here. This is the United States. The average white woman in the United States makes $40,000 a year. Keep that in the back of your head, okay? The average Hispanic woman in the United States makes $28,000 a year. Now, this is why I find it funny whenever people try to run around here talking about Hispanic women make way more money than black women. No, they, have, no, they don't. Stop that argument. <laughs> All right. So I remember there was some dusty crackhead looking dude trying to argue with me about that. Oh, well, Hispanic women make more than black women. I can tell you didn't do no research. Just know whenever y'all come on this channel and I say anything, I've researched it. I don't just talk out my ass. Hispanic women don't make no money. Now, to be fair, they still have traditional men who take care of them. And they do make a lot of money under the table. Because a lot of them do cleaning jobs under the table and stuff like that. Just like a lot of the men do labor jobs under the table. But I digress. No, everyone likes to dump on black people on YouTube for some reason, but both things are not true. Anyways, moving to the right, 
See, the average black woman is at $33,000, which is another myth buster. Oh, black women make more than black men. No, they don't. The only generation of women that ever made more money at any point than men was Gen X black women. Gen X black women barely, but they did, make more money than men, especially when they got into their late 40s. But that's it. On average, black women do not make more money than black men. Millennial black men make more money than their women. Gen Z black men make more money than their women. Every other generation that's not X makes more money than their women. So stop that false narrative. And then on the far right, you see Asian women who earn the most at 45000 Now, to the right of them, where you see 32, that would be the Native American women. But Asian women earn $45,000, okay? So white women at 40, Hispanic women 28, black women 33, Asian women 45. Now I want to show you guys some more cool stuff really quick. Right here we have the statistics on the average earnings of men. All right, now this is broken into age brackets. So it's all over the place, right? It's a little bit all over the place. But essentially, if you did the math, right, white men would average out throughout basically their lives. They would average out to about $50,000. Now, here's what I want you guys to realize. I just said on the last page, the average white woman makes what? $40,000. The average white man makes about $50,000, right? If you put everything together and round it off. How much is that? That's $90,000. What is that? Enough money to live comfortably? Anywhere. $90,000 puts you damn near at six figures. With good budgeting, that's enough money to live comfortably pretty much anywhere. See, you would do bad by yourself with $40,000, but you would do better together. Woo! Let it breathe, run it back. I said, you would do bad by yourself with $40,000, but you would do better together if you had 90, right? Let's look at the black man. If you averaged all these numbers together, right, you get about 40, 41 something thousand something dollars, right? The average black woman makes 33. You put that together, that puts you right at $75,000, right out about where you need to be to be comfortable. Now, again, with a family, it's going to be rough. But you will have enough money that you should be okay. Again, you're probably going to have to cut down on vacations and stuff like that because y'all would need to come up with an extra at least $30,000, right? But you're going to be good. You're going to be all right. Now, we all know 75% of black women are single mothers. Imagine how many kids are running around here malnourished, ain't got no damn health insurance, damn sure ain't got no life insurance, ain't got no goddamn dental, ain't got no goddamn tutors in the public school indoctrination camp because their mama just can't afford it. For all the bravado, she cannot afford it. And all it would take is the black man coming back home, and just like that, you're in a way better financial position. You're damn near at the comfort spot, right? Now, again, I say the comfort spot for a family is at least six figures. On your own, it's 75, right? But we're all in agreement, right? Me, Yahoo, everybody seems to be in agreement that you're going to need at least... $75,000. Black women and black men come together, they have $75,000. Over here, Hispanic men. You take all those numbers, divide them out, they'll come out to about roughly probably $40,000 too. I also want you guys to take a look at this because another myth buster, a lot of people run around saying black men are the lowest earning men in the country. No, they're not. And I've said this several times before and I'm going to say it again because you're looking at it right now. Black men earn more money on average than Hispanic men. Is the line big? No. Hispanic men still sit around $40,000, right? But black men do make more on average than Hispanic men. Just want to throw that out there, too. But either way, you take the Hispanic man's average salary and you take his woman's average salary, they're actually the only ones who will fall below the $65,000 line. But it doesn't affect Hispanics as much because they believe in taking care of each other as a family. This is why the running joke is, you know, 19 Hispanics might hop out of a car. They don't just live alone. This is the reason why the women don't have to make that much money because in a Hispanic household, not all, but a lot of them, it's not just mom and dad, abuela is in there, you got some cousins in there, your uncles in there, your aunties in there, all in one damn house, right? And sharing bills and splitting money. So they don't need as much because of their system. Again, Hispanics, right, in America, by and far, have the most traditional family system as far as the men doing the work and the women staying in the house and them kind of stacking upon each other and trying to build generational wealth, right? 
And then if we go over here to Asian men, the Asians are killing the game. They're killing the game. So we know the average Asian woman makes about 50000 If I take all these numbers and divide them up, it'll put them at about sixty five, sixty thousand 60000 for the men. We put them together. They are well over six figures. They're doing fantastic. They're doing fantastic. They're good to go. And that's the point I really want to drive home in this video. Yes, you can do bad by yourself, or you can be an adult, and you can do better together. It's completely up to you which route you decide that you want to go. Now, I want to show you guys one more thing before we get out of here, right? And that's this. This is the average household income by race, right? Now, you see Asian Americans have an average median household income of $100,000. I just talked about that. Doing great, right? Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islanders have a median household income of about 69000 right? White have an average household income of about $74,000, all right? A little bit less than where I roughly put them at, but close enough. They're at that comfort level. Now, every other family you see is going to be underneath that comfort level. Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islanders, $69,000. they are under it, but they're close enough. They're close enough, right? Non-white Hispanics, 57,000. American Indians, 53,000. And all the way at the bottom, you have African Americans at $48,000. You know why the average household income of African Americans is only $48,000? Because black men and black women don't ever get together. They don't believe in the sanctity of marriage. They don't believe in family. No matter how many data you show them, no matter how many statistics you show them, they still ignorantly and arrogantly go out here saying, I can do all this on my own. I don't need nobody. I got, I can do this myself. And the community continues to get crappier and crappier and crappier. And statistics continue to prove that if we continue to go down this road, it's only going to get worse. As a matter of fact, the black family's net worth, not average income, but net worth is predicted to be at zero dollars within the next 15 years. Now, listen, man, facts over feelings. Go debate your mother. I'm not going to debate with you guys on nothing in here, man. Because it's all facts. There's nothing to debate. There is nothing to debate. You can do bad by yourself or you can do better together. The reality is most of you don't have the education level. Most of you do not have the skill. Most of you do not have the resume building, the networking, the connections. It takes a lot to get a six-figure job, guys. It ain't just how smart you are or what type of degree you have or what type of trades you have. It's who you can network with. Who do you know? who likes you, all that stuff. Most of you don't have enough of that to ever get to six figures on your own is what I'm trying to point out to you. But all of you, no matter what race you are, no matter what race you like, if you were to combine with the opposite sex, y'all would have enough money to live comfortably. Women have been working for the greater part of 60 years now. There's a lot of reason why we're going through so much inflation. It's not one thing, but one of the major reasons we're going through so much inflation is because the country is starting to expect the average household income to be at least 75000 because they're trying to make the assumption that you guys are going to stay together. And if we're being honest, the reason the black community is getting it way harder than everybody else right now is because we don't. It's because we don't. You can bend it, twist it, flip it, bop it, whatever way you want, but that's just the reality of the situation. Because we do not stay together, that's why we're farthest behind. And until we change that mindset, we will remain the farthest behind. With all that being said, guys, that's my video for today. I hope you guys were able to get something positive out of it. I am Alex, y'all, and I am out. Peace.